Dish Network is targeting SpaceX Starlink, and this could actually slow down your internet speeds. Let's go see why. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus Combination. That zing, that bergamot, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technical day, let's call it. So we're gonna be talking about what is going on with Dish Network and SpaceX Starlink and even even one web as well as direct tv they're all in this fight this battle of frequency of bandwidth and they're fighting over ku and c band and ka band and they're trying to see who can get more spectrum or use the most amount of spectrum so i was reading an article over on space news i want to share with you and i want to get your thoughts on this what do you think about this do you think that this is going to end up working not working it has to do with a lawsuit that the 5G coalition along with Dish Network has levied again. Anyways, we'll get into that in just a second. Before I do, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, why the hell not? They are free. Go over to jcristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. Pick something up. Once again, it's free. If you like this video, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Share it with your community, with Reddit, with Facebook, wherever you frequent. Also, if you're not subscribed as of yet, consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a little thank you button right down here that you can click, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's fine too. Consider becoming a member of the channel, that would be even better. Also, if you want some more Starlink content after watching this one, I put together a Starlink playlist just for you. This is just for you. Click that button when you're done watching this video and you'll find about 170 more Starlink centric videos, how to's, reviews, commentary, what to buy, what not to buy, why. This channel has always been about the why, right guys? That's what you're here for. Anyways, let's get into this article. Like I said, I want to get a little bit deeper into this. Just some backstory about what these different bandwidths are. Basically, what we're talking about is 12 gigahertz band right now. Now, if you don't know it, SpaceX Starlink uses KU band as well as KA band from 12.2 gigahertz up to 12.2 seven gigahertz and that is for the downlink now the uplink is sitting right around 12.7 gigahertz up to 4.5 gigahertz remember 12.7 that is very very important so that gives you like kind of a idea of what's going on that is from dishy up to the satellite from the satellite and back now there is other spectrum being used by spacex starlink that takes the satellite signal and broadcasts it down to the ground but to a ground station and then from the ground station back up to the satellite from 17.8 gigahertz to 19.3 gigahertz is that downlink and the uplink is 27.5 to 30 gigahertz, I believe. That is that uplink between, once again, the ground station and the satellite. A whole bunch of geekiness, but just to give you an idea of this frequency and where things sit. Now, you know, a lot of people talk about 5G and, oh, my phone is 5G and I have a 5G gateway from Verizon or for T-Mobile and now AT&T Air or whatever they want to call it. Basically, they are fixed 5G fixed internet, two-way internet to a tower somewhere. Well, those usually work right around the megahertz spectrum. So if you are looking at the LTE band, you're looking at about 19, 18, 1700 megahertz, right around there, even down to 600 megahertz. Whereas when you get into 5G, your N41, your 77, so on and so forth, you're up in that mid spectrum, which is about 2.5 gigahertz on up to, let's call it eight gigahertz. The C band is right around four gigahertz to eight gigahertz. And usually we talk about C band because now we're seeing all of these providers rolling out C band, saying how it's like the next thing, the next coming of Christ, the next best thing since sliced bread. And while it is fast, it's not as fast as what we see overseas. Overseas, they're using a lot of MM wave. Now MM wave 
wave. I'm not going to get into frequencies for you, but basically it is extremely fast, much faster, higher in frequency, but since it is higher in frequency, it can't penetrate walls very well. Very fast, high data rates, but it can't penetrate walls. Where C-band, sitting between that four gigahertz to eight gigahertz, is kind of that, let's say, sweet spot where you can still go through walls, but you still get some pretty good speeds, unlike the 5G MM wave that we see a lot overseas. So that just gives you a little bit, hopefully, an understanding of the different frequencies. But let's get into this article because I think that it is very interesting and it kind of gives an idea of where things are going. This fight that's happening between SpaceX Starlink and DISH Network that's been happening for a while. But DISH is trying to play their cards right. And we'll see that in this article. So anyways, it starts out with DISH Network is seeking permission to use 12 gigahertz spectrum for fixed terrestrial broadband in the United States three months after regulators denied its plans for mobile service in the band following interference concerns from Starlink and other satellite operators. Now, those other satellite operators would like OneWeb and DirecTV, so on and so forth. DirecTV owned by who? AT&T, my favorite. Sure. The article continues. It would be easier to avoid interference with other users of the band when services are provided to fixed locations and not customers on the move. Dish Executive Vice President of External and Legislative Affairs, Jeff Bloom, said in an interview. Now, he's correct about that. Yes, it is definitely easier to segregate or to know where the different frequencies are being used when they're in a fixed location because that is not now locked down there, period, is geo-locked in that location. Whereas when you're talking about things like a mobility type of service that SpaceX Starlink has, for example, that thing could be anywhere. So Jeff Bloom is correct in his assertion. Now, he continues by saying, we know where the customers are, unlike mobile where they could be anywhere. So it is easier to coordinate and share. This is also correct. The satellite TV broadcaster, along with Spectrum Holding Company, RS Access, have licenses in the band that they are looking to upgrade to provide terrestrial 5G service. DISH had hoped to use the frequency between 12.2 gigahertz and 12.7 gigahertz, part of the KU band, for a high-powered two-way mobile service to support the wireless network it is building across the United States and other spectrum. Now, once again, that is 12.2 to 12.7. What did we say about that? 12.2 to 12.7 is the downlink, the KU band downlink, for SpaceX Starlink, right? They want to use this spectrum, the exact same spectrum. And SpaceX Starlink is saying, wait, 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 wait. No, you're not going to use the exact same frequency that we are and hope that there's no collision, no problems, no interference, no SNR problems, no signal to noise mess ups where you end up with more noise than you actually have good signal, right? They're like, no, I don't think so. So this is basically what they said to the FCC and the FCC now has to make a decision. Now they kind of made a little bit of a decision that I was reading in this article, but we'll get to that in just a second. The article continues, however, SpaceX's Starlink and fellow non-geostationary satellite operator OneWeb, which uses the frequencies to connect user terminals, warned this plan would severely disrupt their broadband networks. Sounds familiar, right? Dish's satellite broadband rival, TV, majority owned by U.S. telco AT&T, also said millions of customers would suffer extensive harmful interference if the plan went ahead. So you have SpaceX, you have OneWeb, you have AT&T or DirecTV, and they're all asking the FCC to say no to this plan. Now, like I said before, the KU ban for SpaceX Starlink is from 12.2 to 12.7. That is the downlink. That is the link that would get disrupted. The down speed. The uplink is from 12.7 to 14.5. That is just on the cusp of something possibly getting interrupted at that 12.7 gigahertz range. Now, the article continues, DISH, RS Access, and other members of the 5G and 12 gigahertz coalition, there's always a coalition, 
had argued that mobile service could coexist with other users of the spectrum. Now, what they were saying, and I talked to you guys about this about ah, two, three months ago, what they were saying is, oh, we can use the exact same spectrum and basically coexist with you guys and not interfere in any way. And these people are saying, what are you talking about? How is that going to be the case? How are you going to make that happen? Oh, they said we have means of doing it. Well, they better come up with this method soon because it's just simply not going to happen if they don't. Now, the article continues with, but following multiple competing interference studies, the FCC or the Federal Communication Commission voted in May to deny their mobile plan. And that was when I did that report on this in May when the FCC said, listen, no, we're not going to let this go. Well, they're back. It continues, the 5G and 12 gigahertz coalition submitted a regulatory filing to the FCC on August 9th. That's just last week. That calls on the regulator to instead open up 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz frequency to high powered two way fixed broadband services. From 12.2, to 12.7. They want to open it up, not to just single direction, which SpaceX Starlink is using for down feed. They want it opened up for bilateral or bi-directional connection. The FCC also proposed allowing flexible terrestrial wireless in nearby 12.7 to 13.25 gigahertz spectrum. So what they're saying here is, well, we're not going to let you have this bilateral, bidirectional connection between 12.2 and 12.7. Maybe we'll give you from 12.7 to 13.25. What do you say? Now, we don't know if that actually is going through as of yet, but that's kind of what they're saying here between the lines. Allowing more than 1,000 megahertz of spectrum between 12.2 gigahertz and 13.25 gigahertz for terrestrial communication would, quote, enable the U.S. to take over several international competitors, including China, and propel the country back into a global leadership position in 5G competitiveness. This is what the coalition said in the filing. Well, yeah, that sounds all good. It sounds more like pie in the sky to me, but I understand where they're going with it. It continues with, while DISH currently does not provide fixed broadband services, its sister company Echostar does from a fleet of geostationary or geocentric spacecraft. Dish and Echostar announced plans on August 8th to merge their business to combine their terrestrial and space connectivity offerings. So they announced on the 8th that they were going to possibly combine Echostar and Dish Network. Then on the 9th, the very next day, they put in this filing. This is how business works, guys. This is how it works. They finalized with SpaceX, OneWeb, and DirecTV did not respond to our request to comment on the plans to provide high-powered and two-way broadband service to the 12 gigahertz band. So, yes, there was no comment as of yet. They're probably not going to comment because this is probably going to go through full litigation. It's first going to go through the FCC. If the FCC was to approve this, they would probably go into all kinds of lawsuits and all kinds of a mess and the reason being like i said before they're trying to share spectrum but not only share it single directionally they want to share it bi-directionally and literally put a feed or put power into the service going up and down that frequency they're not going to allow that shit. It just, it's not going to happen, in my personal opinion. They are saying how this would be so wonderful for the U.S. and how we're going to take back our 5G supremacy in the world. I don't know what the hell they're talking about because the U.S. has never been supreme when it comes to 5G. The U.S. telcos don't know 5G from their ass and their elbow. They have not a friggin' clue. They can't discern the difference. Trust me. My family that are in Europe, when they say they have 5G, they got friggin' 5G. They're getting 500 megabits, 700 megabits. Sometimes they're getting a gigabit through their wireless connection, through their tower. 
Are you kidding me? Do you know anyone in the U.S. that's getting those type of numbers here with, I don't care who, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, you could pick any of them. The answer is no, absolutely not. The reason being is, like I said before, a lot of these service providers overseas, not only do they use the C-band, which is fast, and that's what we are trying to migrate to here in the U.S. That's AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, all of them. They're trying to get into C-band, which that C-band, instead of being in the 2.5 gigahertz, it's right around 4 gigahertz to 8 gigahertz. It is a little bit tighter. It's a faster band. They're going to be able to push more data, faster data, but as you get higher in that spectrum, it's harder to get through through bushes and walls and all kinds of other obstructions. But when you go into Europe, they don't give a crap about obstructions, but they're using MM wave. They're using very high speed, high frequency signals that is getting just unfreaking believable speeds. So not only in Europe, you're seeing fiber everywhere, but if you don't have fiber, you could be sitting on a mountain like my family is on a mountain in Sicily getting like gigabit connection on a tower. What is that? And we're sitting here, oh God, we just got a hundred megabits. We're getting like a tenth of what they're getting. Shut up. It's just ridiculous. Anyways, I have vented. You know, coming full circle, looking at this, we know that SpaceX and OneWeb and DirecTV, they are going to continue the fight. They are going to fight and fight and fight. And we're going to see Dish Network, once again, probably come together with Echo Star, forming that alliance or putting them both together, putting the terrestrial with the non-terrestrial, combining them into one. So maybe that they have a little bit more lobbying power or whatever it takes for them to be able to use this spectrum the way they want to use it, regardless how it would affect you as a Starlink user. They don't care about that, not even the least. Once again, they want to use 12.2 to 12.7 and then use it bi-directionally. I don't think it's going to happen. That's my personal opinion. I personally think that it would create horrible SNR. Signal to noise ratio become abysmal, especially when we're talking about SpaceX Starlink users that have a mobile service, for example, and they have on the top of their truck a Starlink dish or on the top of their RV a Starlink dish and they're not in one spot and they're moving around everywhere and you don't know where they're going to be. You don't know where there's going to be that overlap of spectrum. Matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why SpaceX has a hard time filling in the entire country because there's a lot of people that are moving around. So if I'm in a cell that can only support, let's say, 200 Starlink satellites and I have now very close to me a park, all right, an amusement park. And during holidays, it fills up with campers. It's also a KOA. When that place fills up, what happens? Now, all of a sudden, my little node here that has, let's say, 150 homes on it or 150 businesses, all of a sudden, that turns into 250 and 300 or maybe even more just because of that KOA. So now what? So SpaceX now has to slow my speed down so that we can give a little bit of data to them. It's a pain in the ass, but the same thing holds true here with frequency. You cannot expect to be on the exact same frequency and not to have some crosstalk or some overlap. All right, you're going to end up once again with worse signal to noise, both directions. That means on their side and on our side, on SpaceX Starlink side. So I really hope that the FCC sees through this, this combining once again of Echo Star and Dish Network, combining terrestrial and non-terrestrial and more lobbying and doing all this literally a day before they put in a filing and all this kind of trickery that they do. I hope the FCC sees through it and does not provide them with the go ahead. That will help us. Anyways, I want to know your thoughts. I have vented thoroughly down below. Let me hear your thoughts. What do you think about this? What did I get wrong? What did I get right? What do you think? If you enjoyed this, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe, do all those things, and then go over to jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.